So now in this video we're going to look at this circuit and I spent most of the day now working on this and I got it where I am pretty happy with it so first let's look at the voltage of this capacitor so as you can see it is 22.4 volts which by itself would not be too exciting except for the power supply we are using it's a breadboard power supply is only a 5 volt power supply so I was able to build a voltage booster with uh, components I already have so this is uh, one two three four five six seven LEDs in series so they're blocking about 14 volts in that range in fact we can look at the voltage that they are blocking right here and as you can tell they're pretty bright so they're blocking 13.8 volts so pretty much 14 volts let us yank this plug out of the voltage slot and plug it into the milliamp spot and to be safe we're going to go to 200 milliamps of current or less there we go and we can yank the jumper out and plug it right there just kinda halfway plugged in so that we can move it easy but there's all the LEDs we got about 9.3 milliamps of current flowing right now and so this circuit can't output a ton of current but as I cut out one LED after another I'm gonna skip some they are in series so I can easily skip them and we'll go right up to the one kilo ohm resistor and it's got 18 volts across it right now with this amount of current it's dropping the voltage and it's probably getting pretty hot so it's a quarter watt resistor we're probably putting a little more than a quarter watt down there but we did it shortly don't do that for a very long period of time so now I have the power turned off and we'll do a step-by-step -step build so to begin with we're using a 555 timer this is the NE555 we have to power it so pin number 8 goes to the positive rail pin number 1 goes to the negative rail that's whenever you use the 555 timer and based on the voltage here 5 volts the the uh, threshold pin right here pin number 6 monitors the voltage of a capacitor we will add later and it looks for when the capacitor is one third and two thirds voltage of the power supply and so you can see we got a jumper that goes over to pin 2 when the capacitor is one third or less of the power supply voltage then the trigger pin number 2 is basically triggered that sets the output high and also it stops discharging the capacitor so that the resistor we add can charge it so let's add that now the resistor we're going to use to charge the capacitor is a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor 4700 ohms and in this case they used K in place of the uh, decimal point because sometimes it's hard to see decimal points in uh, writing so we have the uh, 470 K resistor right there that's going to pin 7 the discharge pin now the next resistor which is also going to add time to the charging and through trial and error I found one kilo ohm works best right now we're going to put from a pin 7 to pin 6 so the discharge pin to the threshold pin right there and then I found that works pretty good is a 47 nanofarad capacitor so pretty small value capacitor and uh, but we'll be uh, turning this on and on a lot on and off a lot so right there going to the negative rail and to uh, pin number six the uh, threshold pin so that monitors the voltage it gets up to two-thirds volts then pin six notices it's two-thirds volt and then it starts discharging so it will discharge through that resistor so it charges through two resistors and then uh, the output's high and then 
once we get to two thirds voltage then it starts discharging and the output goes low it charges through that capacitor until it's done discharging so it's going to take longer to charge the output's going to be high longer which is what we want we need a little time to get the inductors to get current to start flowing because they don't want current to flow right away they, they kind of fight it and uh, so it takes time for current to build up so we're going to add the two inductors right now and so they go from the positive rail to the collector of this 2N2222 NPN bipolar junction transistor so it works a bit better with two of them in parallel so I'm going to add them now the 555 timer output I have a 470 ohm resistor and that's going to the base of the transistor so now the 2N2222 an NPN bipolar junction transistor is going to go right as you can see it there so when you're looking at the flat side as we are now the left pin is the emitter the middle pin is the base and the right pin is the collector it's very important the collector go to the inductors which uh, current will flow directly from the uh, positive rail other than the internal resistance of the inductors and uh, it will come here and the uh, resistor to the base of the transistor from the 555 timer will be turning the transistor on and off it's going to work as a switch the current from both uh, when the output is positive current's going to flow from base to emitter and at the same time current's going to flow through the inductors and then to the collector through the transistor and then to the emitter so when the transistor turns off the inductors are still going to force current to keep flowing and that's why we have a rectifier dial and so we are going to give the current a path to the capacitor and also to this Zener dial so it's up here at the collector of the transistor and then it comes down there you can see the gray stripe is over here and so when the transistor turns off current still gonna want to flow for a bit through the inductors so it can flow through there this will be more positive that side more negative so we have a Zener diode here this is important because the uh, voltage will just keep rising as the capacitor charges and uh, so we're going to use a 22 volt Zener diode so it is reverse bias so this will be more positive this more negative it's the negative rail and uh, so it's not going to pass current until there's 22 or more volts in that range it moves a little bit but about 22 volts anything above that current starts flowing and it just lets whatever current flow through that it needs to, to hold 22 volts so now we're going to take the capacitor here and this is polarized this is a 470 micro farad capacitor and uh, exact value I don't think really matters too much for this particular circuit we do want to make sure we're going to be dealing with 22 volts it's only rated for 50 volts and so we do definitely want to make sure it's inserted in the right direction I haven't destroyed an electrolytic capacitor yet and uh, I don't want to so we'll make sure that it is in the right direction and now we just have the load which I'm not going to do a step by step build of there you can see the resistor going to the first LED and then we just keep moving them down one uh, spot for uh, each LED so they are in series and we can connect the jumper there if we want we should be fully the circuit should be fully done so I took it apart and put it back together a bit so let's see if it works properly and it is working properly and I don't know if you can hear but there's a buzzing I think that's the inductors I'll uh, I'll be quiet I'll turn this off and on a couple times and you can see that inductor move 
these are magnetic so they're electromagnets I wasn't thinking about that but uh, there you can see they're not pushing apart I don't think they're just relaxed now and now they came together a little bit so I wasn't planning to talk about that I didn't even notice that until just now and I don't know if you can hear the buzzing there is a buzzing alright so a few more things first off these are 10 millihenry inductors and I think they have a minimum of 25 ohms of resistance and the faster you turn them on and off the resistance goes up and uh, so just be aware of that this power supply can only handle 500 milliamps of current as probably does the transistor so in that range you want to obviously look at uh, all component specifications before you uh, use them and so because of the internal resistance I think that the current is limited to below 500 milliamps so now another thing we're going to do we're going to turn this on and pluck the capacitor out and the capacitor is not completely needed now we will turn the power supply off so a lot of times I short circuit capacitors to discharge them you do not want to do that with this one and uh, see if I can get it in there there we go so you saw that spark maybe that sparks no big deal but uh, I don't care for it so probably better to discharge this capacitor after it's charged with a resistor and it will probably go down over time but uh, in any case there we go so doesn't want to go back in now or did it I think it did so in any case uh, that's about it for this circuit again the uh, the diode I mentioned the diode it allows current to go this way but not that way so once the capacitor gets current in there unless it's above the 22 volts or going through a load the diode keeps it from going back that way for whatever reason and uh, so that's why we have a diode there instead of just connecting that down to there it needs to allow positive current to go towards negative this way and not come back that way 